my name is Laura Resendez and I'm a flutist um, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about some Latin music, play for you, and teach you how to make your very own instrument at home. We're going to be making a maraca today. So hopefully this is going to be doable with stuff that you have around your house already. Um, so I will go through everything that you're going to need and you can gather all that up and then we'll do this fun project and hopefully make some music together. So I um, chose the maraca because I, although I'm a classical flutist, I love playing different styles of music. And a style that I got into when I was younger was Brazilian choro music, which is really fun, awesome, like upbeat, lively, um, Latin style flute music. And it usually has percussion with it. So drums, um, sometimes guitar, other stuff. So you guys are gonna be helping me out a lot by playing the maracas with me. Um, so uh, before we get going, I figure I'll just play you a sample of what some of this music sounds like. So let's get that started. good time. Um, so you may have noticed that there was more than one instrument playing there. Uh, well, they were both flutes. Um, there was more than one um, voice playing there. Um, and that was actually, this is from a book of music that's kind of for mixed players. So you can play it with like a C instrument and a B flat instrument. So like a flute and a clarinet or um, all sorts of other things. And then there's guitar parts and piano parts that you can mix in. And when uh, I was playing music during quarantine, I was getting really bored playing by myself all the time. Um, and so I came up with the solution of recording myself to play duets with. So what you just heard was a pre-recorded um, version of me playing the like second voice, or in this case, second flute part, and then me live playing flute on top of that. So I did that with all kinds of stuff um, and it was a really fun way to still get to play music with another person even though it, the other person was just me and it was a recording but it was still a neat thing to be able to do. So um, let's uh, get started collecting our materials for our maraca so that we can talk about how to play together. Me? recorded me, right? I'm on a video and you live, just like I just did. So let's get started.
All right, so um, let's get started on our maraca. I'm gonna um, tell you what you're gonna need and then you can go collect that stuff. You can always pause the video if you need to and um, we'll go from there. So today in front of me, I'm sitting at my um, toddler's craft table right now. I'm also a mom, so uh, at-home crafts are definitely something I do a lot. Um, you're gonna need some construction paper, whatever will do. It can be drawn on, torn on, doesn't matter. Um, you're gonna need some scissors. You're gonna need some tape, uh, and I. you can use whatever. I have blue duct tape, I have a little bit of scotch tape left. Um, you're gonna need an empty toilet paper roll, just one. Um, but, and then you're going to need some kind of plastic bottle. So I've got an empty, um, sparkling water bottle or a soda pop, or, um, you could even improvise. You could probably make it work with like a can, aluminum can of some kind. So whatever you got. Um, and then you're going to need some kind of filler. So it can be anything. So I've got dry beans or pasta. I got popcorn kernels here. Um, some lentils are an option. I've got dry rice, white rice, and, or even if you don't have those things, go outside and just collect some tiny pebbles or stones. Go for a walk and collect them and then you can use those. Um, so if you need to pause and go collect any of your supplies, now's the time. And if not, we'll go on together. Um, so we're going to be making, like I said, a maraca. Um, you can always make two if you want to and get more creative. I just have this one sample. But we'll build one together now. And um, the maraca is a percussion instrument typically used in Latin or Caribbean music. And it's believed to hail from originally from Puerto Rico. Um, and it was originally made with the hollowed out dried fruit of the higuera tree. Um, we are not going to be making it out of a hollow dried fruit, but instead our you know, crafty home stuff. Um, but you also see it made out of wood or dried gourds or things like that. So, um, okay, so step one is you're going to need to um, fill your bottle. Let's do that first. Uh, so take the lid off your bottle. And if you need a funnel, you could do that. I'm just going to kind of like put some stuff in there. I think I'm going to go with popcorn kernels um, just for a different sound. Each uh, dry filler is going to give you a different sound. So, you know, you can always experiment with that. Um, yeah, that's going to be a loud one. I might actually mix. Should I do like a little bit of both? Um, maybe we'll do a little bit of rice. Put a couple of those in there. Um, not too much. Oh, yeah. See how you can hear the different sounds um, with the different ingredients? All right. Awesome. Dust off your extra rice. Not a problem. <laughs> Um, put your lid back on your bottle, nice and tight, and you can already hear what the instrument is going to sound like, right? So then what you're going to do is you're going to need to attach your um, empty toilet paper roll to the narrow end of your bottle. So in the past I've used hot glue for this because um, when we're playing them, it can be kind of challenging for the instrument to hold together if it's not like securely attached. Um, so hot glue is an option here or other types of glue, but just for the sake of speed, duct tape is a great solution. Um, so I'm just going to take a couple pieces of this duct tape and tape the um, empty toilet paper roll. Then you're gonna to need to cut a sheet of construction paper the size of your roll. So you can either um, like lay it out on there and kind of measure how wide it needs to be and then cut from there. Um, or you can like actually measure it out if you want to. I'm the one who eyeballs a lot of things um, for the sake of time. So I already cut this little piece here um, you can use a tiny piece of tape to attach it. And all of this construction paper stuff is extra. I mean, it's basically already a maraca, but just to make it look, you know, a little more festive and fun, we'll put some extra 
stuff on there. So a little bit of scotch tape, wrap that around. And then you're gonna take a larger sheet of construction paper and just overlap a little bit um, over the handle so that it covers it up. We don't wanna give away our secrets, right? What, how we're making this um, wonderful music. It looks a lot more mysterious if our instrument is all covered up than if it's you know a water bottle with <laughs> beans in it. So, and then I just wrap it around, right? Pop that on there and secure it with some tape. And then with the top, you can always like cut it off. You can leave it just like this if you want to, or you can fold it over and make it a little bit more square. I'm gonna hold that with my knee while I get a piece of tape. And voila, we've got a maraca. And then um, you're all set to go. Yeah, so when we're talking about how to shake the maraca, um, you're gonna notice that different ways that you shake it are gonna get you different sounds and you should feel free to experiment with that. Um, so like if you shake it um, really hard over and over, you're gonna get kind of that same strong percussive sound. If you don't really use your wrist and kind of like snap it at the end, you're gonna get a really kind of softer, quiet sound. So what we're looking for is kind of being able to get some emphasis on parts of the measure. So we're gonna um, maybe shoot for one and three, right? In music, um, when you have four beats in the measure, typically, beats one and beats three are the strongest beats. So we're gonna um, shake on a nice steady beat, and you can do this with me. One, two, three, four. One, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'm just tapping a little bit harder on beat one and beat three. And you can experiment and play around with it if you've got two. It gives you like some different pitches you can hear. In my opinion, this one's a bit higher than this one in pitch, right? Right, so it gives you some different sound to, to work with there. But again, we're shooting for a nice steady tempo. So when we play together, I'm gonna count you off. I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, and then you start on beat one. So we'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, Um, so, uh, when I play my flute, I'm going to start what's called a pickup, which is a little snippet of music right before the official start. Um, so that's going to happen just on beat four, but I'll still count you guys off. Um, and I'll give you a little sample before so that you can, um, hopefully have the best chance of like staying with the rhythm. Um, but yeah, congrats. Now you have instruments at home. Okay, so we're back. So now it's time to play together. So our tempo is gonna be somewhere around one, two, three, four. And again, I'm gonna count off four beats and then you guys come in on one. So it's one, two, three, four, go, right? So let's practice that. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Right, so that's how it will work. And again, we're going one, soft, two, soft, three, soft, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or whatever you want with the music. It's all going to sound awesome. Okay, so let's do a little test just with that pre-recorded second part, right? So no live flute playing right now. So one, two, three, four. Now it's your turn to come in, all right? So same deal, we'll start right at the beginning. I'll count one, two, three, four, and then we'll go. Here we are, let's do it. 
One, two, three, four. <laughs>